Alabama governor unable to suppress his religious bigotry. Find out more on Atheist Viewpoint. Hello and welcome to Atheist Viewpoint. I'm Dennis Horvitz. I'm David Silverman. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking about bigotry in the governor's office. And I wanted to talk, and we have to call it bigotry. Right. Okay? We have to call it bigotry when a governor comes out or anybody comes out and says, because you don't believe my way, you cannot be my brother or sister. But if you believe my way, you are. That is a certain sense of bigotry. That is what religion does. But when it comes from the governor of a state. An elected official. Who's an elected official. Who's supposed to be the governor of all the people. Mm, all the people, not just his, not just his kind of right. people. We are referring to uh, Governor Robert Bentley, the uh, newly inaugurated governor, uh, Republican governor of Alabama. And uh, actually he made his statement not actually from the governor's office, he made it at a religious service. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the issue isn't, in this case, separation of church and state as much as it is just the fact that he blatantly and openly revealed his religious bigotry. His, his, uh, well, it is separation of church and state in that he was the governor at the time, right. and he comes out and he says, all right, you're officially favored. I mean, that's exactly what he said. If you're not a Christian, you're not my brother or sister. He was essentially saying you're not officially favored. Right. So right. I would say that this is, uh, it's certainly an example well, it, of why the separation of church and state is a good thing. Because right. now we've got a member of the state. Yes, he can practice whatever religion he wants. He can profess whatever mythology he wants. But for him to come out even at a religious service? Well, this is, these, are, th these, are, uh, these are his exact words. Uh, if, we don't ex if we don't have the same daddy, we're not brothers and sisters. So anybody here today who has not accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, I'm telling you, you're not my brother and you're not my sister, and I want to be your brother. So all you have to do is... Convert. Convert. Right? Yes. All you have to do is give yes. up your identity. A governor should never say that. Right. Okay? A governor, right. it doesn't matter if it's in a religious service. Right. Or if it's from the pulpit. It is a violation of the separation of church and state if he endorses Certainly that Certainly if you issue. pardon the expression of violation of the spirit. A yes. separation of church and state. Yeah, and, and and it's unfortunate that he did this, but it really does show um, the depths that religious people will go to actually, you know, separate themselves off from everybody else. And you know, when you're, when you're governor, it's not as if you have you you fly off the script. Mm -hmm. Okay, you and I, we're sitting here. We don't have a script. We don't have a teleprompter. We're just talking. Sometimes we might say something and we might misspeak. When you're a governor giving a speech, right. you've got a team of speechwriters. Yeah. And they count how many times you say a word. Right. Okay? Every speech is calculated. Every speech is written. Every word is thought about. Right. This was very intentional. Well, I think it was intentional, but I think it was... Um, uh, I have a feeling he may have been more circumspect. If he had, if it had been an official governor gubernatorial statement, I think that I think the the I think the importance of this whole story is that um, it reveals the uh, the underbelly. You know what I'm saying? It it, it uh, he felt himself completely relaxed enough in this set this religious setting to kind of let loose with his you know with his bigotry, um, and also and I just also I think we should also mention that. Uh, uh, the Birmingham Jewish Federation, the Hindu American Foundation, and the Birmingham uh, Islamic Society have all... And American Atheists. And American Atheists. By the way. Ha ...have uh, openly expressed their, their displeasure. Um, yeah, and you know what he did? He apologized to the Jews. And when he apologized to the Jews, he basically said, I'm sorry if my remarks offended you. He didn't say, I'm sorry for making the remark. He didn't say, I'm right. sorry for being right. a bigot. He said to the Jews, I'm sorry if my remarks 
were offensive to you. Right. Well, guess what? There are five to six times as many atheists in Alabama as there are Jews. I didn't realize that's true, really. Yeah, five yeah. to six times. We have 6%, actually some people say 11% of the population. I use the USA Today poll, which puts us at 6% of the population in Alabama compared to 1% for the Jews. Right, right. Now that's something. And we've got, uh, of course, we've got Blair Stott in Alabama. Yeah, uh, and, and we just had the great the, work. We just had the 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 RAM, the the regional atheist meet in Alabama, and I sent an open letter. Uh, I FedExed a letter to the governor's mansion saying, "Hey, you know what? Uh, why don't you send me a statement about your brothers and sisters who are non-religious?" And I'll read it at the convention. Son of a gun, never heard a darn thing. No replies to emails. No replies to phone calls. Right. No replies to letters. Nothing. Um, he put out one. I'm sorry if this remark offended you, statement to the Jews. And, you know, i gotta, I got to take umbrage with the Jews here, okay? The Jews gobbled it up, okay? And they did the same thing when the Pope said the exact same thing when the Pope a few years ago said, I'm sorry for the atrocities that some church members have committed against Jews. Not, I'm sorry for the role that the church played in the Nazi, in, in the Nazi occupation or... or, or I'm sorry for the role that the well, Catholic so, Church. So when you say when you say gobbled up, you mean you, you felt that they were too uh, accepting? They were could, very accepting. Yeah. Oh, okay, everything's great. Well, l let's just let's point out that one of the one of the uh, statements made, um, I believe, is from um, a member of the a representative of the uh, Birmingham Jewish Federation said that he ho they they hope to meet with the governor Bentley to quote initiate a dialogue. And to begin what we hope will be a positive and productive relationship, mm -hmm. um, it probably would have been better if um, they had said something like, "Well, we have a right to us to assume that there would have been a positive relationship to begin with anyway." And that what? Why are we beginning a positive relationship at this late in, you know, this stage of uh, stage of the game, more or less? Well, we're, we're beginning a relationship because he demolished it when he said that that he views the, the, the system of Alabama, he views Alabama as having two classes of people. Right, well, and the Hindu I mean, American Foundation condemned the remarks as re intolerant, repulsive, and wholly unacceptable. Bigoted, uh, the word is bigoted. Uh, the New York-based Anti-Defamation anti League asked Bentley to apologize to non-Christians. Um, and uh, Ashfaq uh, Taufik, president of the Birmingham Islamic Society, uh, says he he wasn't sure how to take the government's comments. I don't know. He he, he says, "quote do, Does he does he want those of us who do not belong to the Christian faith to adopt his faith? Uh, we don't want an evangelical politicians. They can be whatever they in their private life. I don't deny his right to believe the way he believes, and I hope he does not me the right deny me the right to believe the way I believe." Isn't that exactly um, the same thing we say? Yeah. Isn't um, that exactly the same thing I say? It's amazing, huh? Well, now, he has an apologist, the Reverend Gil McGee, senior pastor of the Tuscaloosa Church, where Bentley is a deacon and Sunday school teacher, defended the governor, saying, I know the man, I know the heart of the man, Robert Bentley loves other people. Um, as a, he said, oh, as, he but says, no uh, preacher would lie to protect another preacher. That would never happen. <laughs> right. right. Well, that would never happen. Preachers don't lie to protect other preachers. Well, preachers don't think, oh, no, 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 everything's fine when you're talking about you another know, preacher doing something wrong. That would never happen. See, there's a very complex psychology behind this, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like uh, bigotry masquerading as love, you know what I mean? Yes. Is they're convinced, they've convinced themselves that uh, this kind of nonsense uh, is, is love and, and uh, even though, uh, you know, making statements like that is somehow an expression of, of uh, the Holy Spirit, which I think they said earlier in the... In yes, the, it's the expression of the Holy Spirit, which doesn't exist, so actually it is an expression of the man's thoughts, and then he says, oh, it's the Holy Spirit coming out of me. Look at me, it's the Holy Spirit speaking through me. This is what liars say Have you ever seen when they get caught and when they get caught. Yeah, and God is telling me, God tells me Yeah, this. and afterwards, and afterwards, you know, we're not... You see, uh, uh, Bentley's communication director, uh, Rebecca Caldwell Mason, later said, uh, Bentley intends to be the governor of all the people, Christians and non-Christians alike. We're not trying to insult anybody. Um, and, and, and that's probably true. I mean, that, that, that kind of tunnel vision, they're so narrow-minded in their view that they probably don't even 
you know what I mean? That's why I say it betrays kind of the underbelly of, of, a, of a psychology that's been, that's been in place all along. You, you know? know, Dennis, I disagree with you. I right. really, uh, and, 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 and it, I, I agree that it betrays the underbelly of bigotry, but I don't believe it was unintentional. Because well, every word is tight. Every word no, has gone over. This is a speech from a governor. We're not talking about a slip of the tongue. We're talking about no, a I, I, no, speech. I, I, I understand that, but what I'm saying is that there's, I mean, I, I know that you've come across these kind of people, and I know that I have when, you know, tabling uh, with New York City atheists in the summertime in, in Columbus Circle. There's a certain amount of certainty, that absolute certainty, that um, they just simply believe that what they believe is absolutely true. And so uh, it's not, you know, I mean, I'm not making excuses for them at all. But they feel they it's kind of in a sense of entitlement that they people like that just feel they have they're the beloved of God, that they are filled with the Holy Spirit, and anybody who isn't is just simply not their brother and sister or not, you know, saved. Yes. So um and when I say they're they're not in trouble when I when I say that they're not trying to agree that they're not trying to insult anybody, it isn't like uh it isn't like uh I don't think the intention was to say something just to piss people off. I think it was a straightforward revelation of that kind of tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. it, yes, it was insulting, without question. And yes, um, uh, but I have a feeling it has more to do with just this kind of brainwashed certainty and people's sensibilities be damned. So No pun intended. And, and, and people <laughs> that's very that's very cute. Yeah. Um, I think that we're probably really close to the truth here. Uh, I, I think he didn't care. That's right. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't. But I do think he knew. I, I don't think it was yeah. an intentional slam. I think it was a, oh, this will really piss off the Jews, but who the hell cares about them? Right. I think this will really piss off the atheists. Yeah, it'll piss off everybody else, but I don't care about that. Because this is because I believe this is because the truth. I believe this. So right. so here's the question, and, and you know. We, we talk a lot about do we want atheists in, 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 in office and, and should uh, and do we want to stop religious people from taking office and uh, I've always universally said no, 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 it doesn't matter what you do, what you think, you should be able to get into the office based on the merits of your character. Um, right. But here we have a man who obviously doesn't give a rat's ass about non-Christians. Right. And so little does he care that he doesn't, that he that makes such an overtly offensive right. statement so complete, in public. Right. Completely what wrapped up in his bubble. Yeah. yeah. So is this man actually qualified to be governor? Right. I, I, mean, mean, I, mean, I mean, and this is not a question that I would ask of, you know, George W. Bush, who I think was probably, a, you know, one of the worst presidents in history. And he was a fundamental Christian, uh, a fundamentalist Christian. But he didn't do this. Right, right. He didn't say, oh, everybody right. who's Christian is in and everybody who's not Christian is out. He didn't do this. Right. But this Alabama governor, Bentley, did this. And he came out with a lame-ass apology afterwards, and that, that really ices it in my book. Because if he cared, he would have apologized to everybody, and he would have apologized for saying it. He wouldn't have apologized. Oh, I'm well, sorry if my words offended you. Well, you know, he has he has his apologist, um, William Stewart, a retired political science professor at the University of Alabama, called it a, a rocky start. He said it shows he has to be aware of all, of most everything he says. I think it's unfortunate if he did say that. Um, he knew that you don't become governor without knowing that you have to be careful of every word you say. That's a falsity. That's yeah. not true. That's not right. true. I don't believe that for a second. If you're a governor, you know that every word you say is going to be. I mean, if you go through an election process, I'll tell you one thing. Here, in, in the, at the end of the article, um, uh, of course, this made him a, a national figure right off the bat. Uh, but uh, in the words of Rabbi uh, Beth Bahar of Huntsville, Alabama's Temple B'nai Shalom, she says, "Fortunately, he can be my governor without being my brother. At least he's upfront about his worldview. It's a worldview the Jewish community has experience working with." 
you know, they've worked with bozos before. So. And, and she's right. You know, it is something, it, it is nice that he's out of the closet yeah, with his bigotry. Yeah, his hand right up. Right. Okay, yeah. so that that's a good thing. We know who's our yep. friend and we know who's not our friend. Right. You know? Um, but really, should there be, uh, I mean, what what do we do when we have a governor who only cares about this? This is this is really a place for well, uh, it's just like any it's, it's just like anything else. You know, we people are are not accountable uh, to others uh, for what they believe. They're accountable to others for what they do for actions. Yeah, uh, and I guess he's just going to have to be watched very closely to make sure that he's. You know. It's so unfortunate. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's so it's unfortunate. A, it's a drain. You that we, we, we have a governor in the state of Alabama who doesn't who who actively doesn't like who, who's an active bigot. We have right. an active bigot in the governor's in the governor's mansion, and and you're right. His hand has been tipped. Right. I'm sure we have many governors that are active bigots. Right. Okay. Uh, and we have to deal with them, and we have to deal with this. But you know, sometime. In, in the near well, future. You know, the thing is, in, in a state like Alabama, which, uh, uh, or uh, apparently in the Bible Belt states where they're so heavily Christian, is that anyone who is of that propensity um, can kind of, has, has a lot of leeway because they're never going to be, because the vast majority of people are never going to hold their feet to the fire, more or less. You're never going to have to account for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like... Um, uh, I, I, a New York governor could not get away with making a statement like that. A Massachusetts governor, Rhode Island, you know, uh, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania. No, no govern, governor in the northern, northwest, northeast quadrant could get away with just simply flat out making a statement like that. They wouldn't be reelected. Period. I know, and, uh, and hopefully he won't be reelected. Hopefully, well, I mean, he made Alabama look terrible. Well, he made Alabama look well like. The stereotype of Alabama, you know, you you can say yes. you can see the grandma and the grandpa chewing on a weed with their shotgun the and their chaw, taking a chaw. Yeah, right. But but uh, fortunately, we know that um, uh, there's some very there's some really fine people in Alabama, and some of our best atheists are from Alabama. Yeah, we had an uh, Alabama Ram, and how's our time, Todd? Okay, good. So we had our Alabama Ram. Uh, Alabama fact, Rama. The next, if we don't have enough time to cover, we'll cover it in the next. Uh, we will, segment. and we had over two hundred people in uh -huh. Huntsville uh, come to the Huntsville Alabama convention, and it was a fantastic time. We, we, um, and our our media coordinator is um, uh, Blair Scott. Yeah. Uh, well, he's the communications communi director. All right, I, I, yeah, the he's media the wrong coordinator term. is the wrong term for him. Uh, he, he's the communications director, and he's the former. Alabama State right. Director. So, and so we're saying hello to uh, to Blair. Yo, yo uh, Blair. Hey, yo Blair. Forget about it, you know. Hey, uh, <laughs> and, and yo Scott, and yo, yo Steve, Steve, and yo Christy, yes. and uh, yo everybody else. And I have Tom to tell you something. There. I have to tell you something. Um, you know, for years, my as far as my opinion, I, I I I was of the opinion that the cutting edge of atheism was actually Alabama, just because of the work that Blair and and his people down there were doing. You know. Uh, I I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, you know. if if you if you go to Alabama and you know it's a very interesting um, dynamic in Alabama because Huntsville is a city um, that's built around NASA. Yes. Okay. So there's a huge space complex. And there's an influx of people from all over the world. All over the world with PhDs. Yes. Okay. They all have PhDs. They're all physicists, and they all live in Huntsville. Right. So there's Huntsville is like this bastion of intellect. Yes. Now, I'm not going to trash the rest of Alabama because I haven't been to the rest of Alabama. Right. But the people in Huntsville have a very interesting attitude about the rest of Alabama. Well, yes, but, uh, you know, Blair has, had, uh, was the uh, uh, director of the uh, uh, Mobile Area Free Thought Association, the Mobile right, Alabama. Right, right. And uh, through a, uh, a good deal of his hard work, really, uh, getting people to come out of the closet, getting, you know, uh, standing up for his rights and for his daughter's rights, um, uh, they've come a long way. I know that uh, there was a time when he used to have his tires slashed and his kids would be harassed in school and the teachers would stand there and do nothing. Yep. And by the time I think he left Mobile, 
uh, whenever there was a church and state incident in the national news, the local news media would go to him as the s to be the spokesman. So, yes. Uh, so uh, thank you, Blair, and uh, you know, uh, I I've always I've had a special place in my heart for Alabama atheists. I got to tell you this because I belly of the beast. Yeah, uh, for for great work that they've done and they continue to do. And they've grown and they've solidified yeah. and that went and we had this. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we had our first ram down there. In fact, right. Blair is the first and. Uh, person who who originally suggested that we have it down there. Um, I'm really. I'm, we'll we'll be discussing more of this in next next week's show. But uh, and I'm sorry I didn't make it this year. But I'm going to definitely try to make it next. Year. Well, there's not going to be a ram in Alabama every year. Right. Okay. But they, I think they do have some kind of uh, Alabama. They they're going to have their own thing every year. Yeah. The rams are going to be three times a year, uh, all over the country. So the next uh, event is going to be in Oakland, California, mm -hmm. uh, in May. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, we're going to have uh, a fun time with the rapture. Oh, uh, good. Yeah, in fact, this is a good point. This is a good time to talk about this. It's a little bit of a diversion, but uh, as many of you know, the rapture is scheduled <laughs> for May 21st, um, or so says a, uh, a group of uh, people who are, in my opinion, uh, well, <laughs> very low on the intellectual totem pole. Um, who uh, or on the ethical totem pole, who are saying that they know exactly when the rapture is. They're putting up billboards all over the country, and guess what they're doing on their website? They're selling stuff so that you can learn about the rapture. They're selling all sorts of books and videos, and you can join, you can be a member, and all this stuff but to prepare I, I you for the you rapture. Be, I think you should be very careful in, in that to make the distinction. This is not the December 2012 no, that's end another rapture. That's the Meyer. That's the Mayan right. calendar. Right. That's the uh, that's the other end of the world. The, uh, that's the other end of the this world. This end so. of the world is May twenty first. But see, the great thing about that is, if you're too busy for the end of the world in May of two thousand eleven, you have a backup. You have a, you can always go to the and you know that if that doesn't happen. Someone's going to predict it further on down the line. And so, and so it's like a train. Like if you go to the subway, you miss the train. Don't worry, there's another one right behind. It's a never-ending party. Yeah, Come it's on. awesome. You know. It's so <laughs> what we're doing in Oakland, we're putting up a great big billboard in Oakland. Uh, by the time this airs, uh, the billboard will have been announced. Uh, you know it's nonsense. Um, talking about the billboard, um, uh, a special uh, shout out to our donor Steve, uh, who is uh, donating the entire billboard. And um, at basically what's going to happen is we're going to put that billboard up in Oakland. Uh, we're going to have a party there. Uh, another donor is going to put up uh, another billboard in Houston, an anonymous donor. So uh, it's going to be a rapture party? It's a rapture party. Oh, I'm going to try to be there. Okay, there's going to be one in San Francisco, or I should say Oakland. Uh, there's going to be one in the Houston, uh, Austin area. Uh, and I have friends in San Francisco. I'm sure they'd love to come to that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna we're gonna rent out. Our, we're renting out a Free Thought Hall. Okay. So even even the room that we're getting for this event goes to the Free Thought community. Excellent. Excellent. I think we're getting the high sign here. Okay. We're getting one minute. So um, please check out uh, atheists.org. There's a couple things you have to know. Uh, the rapture parties are in May. The national convention is in April. So the National Convention is first. It's in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, P.Z. Myers, Christopher Hitchens, um, uh, Matt Dillahunty, Jeff Charlotte, Greta Christina. Uh, Christopher Hitchens is going to be there. Christopher Hitchens oh, is going to be there. Yeah. And if you're a student, you can go to the convention and join American Atheists for a total combined cost of $20. Twenty dollars for students to go to the National Convention of American Atheists and hear P.Z. Myers and Christopher Hitchens and Greta Christina and Jeff Charlotte. So if I enroll in junior, junior college, I can get in for twenty. Full time students. Oh, okay. full time students. Yes, I tried, folks. Full time students. <laughs> um, you can check us out on atheists.org, um, and that's it. So thank you very much for uh, for uh, watching the show. I'm David Silverman. Dennis Horvitz. Have a great day. Uh, thank you for watching American Atheist Viewpoint, where reason reigns and reality rules. Bye-bye.